Hi everyone, Coltony Brutano here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review of this new Code Orange album, The Above. New one from Pittsburgh natives, Code Orange. A band whose 2020 record underneath had me in awe a little bit, just because it felt like at the time it was such a leap forward for metal. In terms of fusing it with more electronics and modern glitchy production, it was heavy, it was digital, but still visceral and also dystopian. Aesthetically refreshing in a lot of ways and really on the cusp of something too, which I think was shown in some of the reception the record received as well as a few nice Grammy nominations. And because of my love for that record and the attention it stirred, I could easily say this has been one of my most anticipated follow-ups over the past couple of years. Just because I have to know what ideas will the band explore next? How will they continue to push the envelope, if at all? And with the above, they, 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 they stop pushing. No, no envelope pushing. The envelope's not even in sight. Now, let me preface my thoughts on this project this way. I am well aware that the band's last album, while it was experimental and ahead of the curve in some ways, it also borrowed a lot of tried and true ideas from uh, these bygone eras of alternative metal and new metal. And they did it in a way that was genuinely refreshing. You could say it was tasteful repurposing of some ideas from one of the most polarizing eras in modern metal. And in their own way, Code Orange gave us not just a new and interesting direction for metal, but also uh, some reminders that this era of loud rock was valid, even if most of the bands weren't as good as Linkin Park or Slipknot. And with this new LP, they are digging back into that era of music, but... Uh, giving up any pretense at all of doing it in a way that is new or interesting or cutting edge. I mean, maybe they're giving us some production details and riff ideas that are more chaotic on average than some of the bigger bands of this time period, but this is pretty much the most bald-faced pastiche of any style of rock music I've heard this year. Because, yeah, Code Orange, while they do borrow from this stuff again, they fail to put any spin on it whatsoever, leaving many of these songs feeling like a random patchwork of classic ideas, like the opening track whose spooky, ghoulish, mutated verse vocals and industrial production in the background makes very little sense against the cleanly sung uh, piano-backed choruses. There's also the closing track, which has uh, some eerie industrial Nine Inch Nails inspired passages that have so little in common with the uh, quirky, harmonized guitar solos that follow after. Meanwhile, a drone opting out of the hive is packed with all of these disparate industrial metal sections. Can't really see to build up any momentum from the jump the fuck up riffs at the start to the uh, tick 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 vocal breakdowns on the bridge. At numerous points on this LP I just feel like I'm listening to a collage of five different bands just being slapped together. And there are some moments where it kind of or almost works, like in the case of Grooming My Replacement, where I think the band is able to bottle up a lot of hectic ideas in a short period of time, uh, almost system of a down style. But the surprising downside of this one is some of the more chaotic and experimental production details in the track are mixed like crap and sit above nearly everything else happening in the song. Now, on occasion, the band will drop a track on this LP that is uh, really cohesive, has a lot of melodic lead vocals, is just more catchy, I suppose, more of a ballad angle to it, like in the case of the song Mirror. And while I do genuinely like this track, and I think it's one of Code Orange's better songs in general, it simultaneously also sounds like uh, any given one-hit wonder type radio ballad that a uh, band would have maybe gotten a year of radio playoff back in the 2000s. There's also Splinter the Soul, which is relatively catchy too. It is a white zombie-esque industrial rocker on the verses, but the choruses have these refrains that have the angry teen inside of me ready to rise up and throw down in the pit. I don't want to, yeah, yeah, I don't want to change, I don't want to change, yeah. And while Snapshot has a solid chorus to it as well, and uh, some very impressive string work too, I can really only take so much of this stuff because again, what Code Orange is doing on this project is very specific to a particular era of rock and metal music that has not aged well. And while the place and time period it lands in is very clear, what's unclear is what makes this record stand out in that ocean of mostly awful music. Even with some parts of this record being as weird and somewhat experimental as they are. Because for the most part, this record sounds like a Frankenstein monster of ideas repurposed from like 20 different bands. Really just the sort of thing I would hear played by a radio programmer picking 20 minutes worth of songs uh, by Kitty, Static X, Korn, 
Coal Chamber, Tool, Godsmack, Evanescence. It's 107.3 The Rock, Mickey May here, with you for the next hour. And if you can call me in the next 15 minutes, I've got tickets for you to the Taproot concert this weekend at the Palladium. Opening up, it's Code Orange. With this next song, Circle Through, it might be one of the worst post-grunge songs I've heard in my life. It sounds like Puddle of Mud giving head to Chevelle with Trapped in the Corner watching. And honestly, I'm feeling a strong four on it. Tran, Zishin, have you given this album a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best, you're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like. Please subscribe and please don't cry. Hit the bell as well. Over here next to my head is another video you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, Code Orange, uh, forever.